Hello, in this video, we will explore the Brightspace environment and learn how to navigate the institutional landing page and the course landing page. To get started, we are going to go to learn.georgebrown.ca and this will take us to the landing page for the institution. So this is where you will find all of your courses and settings. And this is what students will also see when they log in. You're probably already logged in uh, in other GBC accounts. So you will go directly into the institutional landing page. I recommend that you bookmark this page to your browser so that you can easily find it. So I have it here. So I don't have to type the URL every time I want to go to Brightspace. I can actually click on my bookmark and that will take me to, the, to my institutional landing page. So here we are in the institutional landing page. Let's take a look at all the options we have here. So the first thing you'll notice on the top left corner is a home icon and also the George Brown College icon. Anytime you need to come back to your institutional landing page, you will click on any of these two items. Even if I go to a course, for example, my sandbox, if I need to come back to my landing page, I can click on any of these buttons here. So the next thing you'll see when you move your cursor to the right is the course selection tool. Uh, when you click here, you'll see a list of all of your courses. And you'll notice that I have pinned some courses uh, to the top. So the most important courses, the ones that I uh, access more frequently, I have pinned so that I can easily access them when I need them. This is one of my favorite um, tools in Brightspace because I can go to a course from here. So let's say I'm gonna go back to my sandbox. Now I'm in my sandbox. I don't, I don't have to go back, back to the institutional landing page in order to access a course. I can actually click on the course selection tool and then I can go to a different course from here. So if you're copying materials from one course to the other, or you're working on a course and then moving to another one, then it's very easy just to click on this icon and find the course you need. Let's go back to the landing page. So that's the course selection tool. Then we have three icons here at the top, message alerts. So this is where you can find instant messages from your students, or you can also email your students from here. There's also the subscription alerts. Uh, so if you subscribe to a thread in a discussion board or uh, a particular topic in your discussion board, then you will see the information from those posts here. So you'll see uh, when a post happened, you'll see the date and the time as well. And then I have the update alerts. And there is an orange uh, circle at the top that indicates that there is a new alert, a new update in my course. And this will tell you about everything that's happening in your course. So I uploaded a video, the video was processing, um, or for example, an assignment that is due soon, a quiz that is due soon. And you can also load more and see um, more of the things that are happening. And if you need to review any of these items in more detail, and you'll notice that the titles are actually links. So you can click on any of these, for example, and they will take you to the course where these uh, update is occurring and to the specific activity or event that the update was about. The next thing you'll see here is your profile picture and then your name. By clicking on your name or the profile picture, you'll see an option for profile, notifications, account settings, progress, and logout. Let's take a look at all of those options. The first one is profile. So this is where you can change your profile picture and you can also update your personal information. And this is information that other users of Brightspace will see. Then we have notifications and notifications are important. This is uh, where you'll find the option to download the Pulse app that allows you to stay up to date on your phone and you will receive notifications on your phone when there are updates in your courses. 
There's also the contact method. There is your George Brown email right there. You cannot change that email. So both students and faculty, all of the communication will happen and all the notifications will be sent to your George Brown email. But you can also register a mobile phone if you prefer to receive notifications uh, through text message. Then we have an option to set up a summary of activity. So you can choose to receive a summary of what ha what's happening in your courses, never, daily or weekly. And then you can choose what time and which day of the week it happens. But you can also choose to turn on, turn on instant notifications. So for example, I have turned on instant notifications for announcements, uh, but there are also notifications for assignments, content that has been created, discussions, grades, quizzes. So you can recommend to your students to turn on notifications for announcements uh, so that they get that important information um, through their emails as well. And once you're done making changes, you can click on save at the bottom. We also have account settings. Um, so here, this is where you can change the font size for your um, for your courses. And you, there's other settings regarding the reading content, the video settings, the time zone, um, and your online status, for example. So you can take a look at those options here for your profile, for your account. Then we have progress. Uh, this is a great tool for students and for, oh, and for faculty as well. So this is where you can see how you're doing in your courses. It, it gives you a summary of your grades, of the content that you have visited, the discussions that you have participated on, uh, assignments and quizzes and more. And this tool is also available for faculty to see how each one of their students are doing uh, to provide support and, and encouragement when needed. And then we have an option to log out. So if you're using a public computer, then you can come here to log out at the end of your session. And finally, here we have the admin tools uh, on the top right corner of the, of the landing page. And this is where you can find the audio, video, and note editor, and the media library. So what are these? I'm gonna go back to the landing page. So in Brightspace, you have the option to record video or audio everywhere where you can create content. So if you're sending an announcement, you can create a video. If you're creating some content for your students, you can also record a video or an audio note. Uh, and the same for students. Students can record videos when they are participating in discussions or submitting an assignment. Um, and they have the option to edit those videos and add captions. And or, well, captions will be created automatically but you can modify and you can add, uh, make edits to the to those captions when needed. So the media library is where all your videos created in Brightspace will be stored. And then the audio and video note editor allows you to make edits to, to the captions. Okay, so that is the top of the institutional landing page. Then we have this navigation bar with a direct link to GB community resources. Uh, so th there are some GBC staff support resources, system check, and direct links to online learning and online orientation. So students will also see some links here. Uh, when they need help, they can access uh, these links for further support. And again, the media library is also here. One thing that I would like to highlight from the resources uh, tab is the system check. So if you go to system check, you will see whether your computer or your device is up to date and properly configured to use Brightspace efficiently. So JavaScript passes, cookies passes, and then the browser as well. And the recommended browsers are Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, or Firefox. We have uh, encountered some issues with Safari. So those are the recommendations. Okay, so what's next? We have a banner for George Brennan College, and under the banner, we have the My Courses widget. So these white uh, candles here, you'll see one for My Courses, one for Announcements, one for Calendar and Quick Eval. These are called widgets. Um, and the widgets contain important information for you and your students and your courses. 
the My Courses widget. This is where you will find all of your co courses uh, organized. It's different from the um, course selection tool because uh, you will see them in a tile format. Uh, you'll see a, a banner or an image for each one of your courses. You'll notice that I have pinned some of my courses. So these appear at the top in the All tab, but I, it, it also creates a specific tab called Pinned. So if you find that you have many courses in your, in your Brightspace environment and it's getting overwhelming or hard to find the information that you need quickly, then you can pin your most important courses and then you can use the pin tab uh, instead of the old tab. You'll notice that there's also a communities and organizations tab if you belong to a community in Brightspace. There are sample courses um, if you belong to a, to a sample course and then sandboxes are here as well. So depending on the types of courses you have, then you'll see them in a, a organized in a different way. If you want to pin a course, you will click on the three dots that appear when you hover your mouse over the image. You'll have the option to see course offering information. You can change the image and we will talk more about that very soon. And then you can pin or unpin a course. Um, so if I go to, oops, I clicked on the course. I'm gonna go back to the landing page and click on the three dots here, course offering information. So this is where you can browse for a course image. Uh, you can also see the name of the course and also the code. So if you if you need the CRN for your course, then course offering information will provide that. Okay, so one other thing that I'd like to show you about the My Courses widget. So you see the courses here, they're listed. And I, the pinned courses are at the top. I can see the name of the course. I can see the CRN and the type of course it is. And you'll notice, for example, this course has an icon with a 30 on it. And that means that I have 30 assignments to review. You can also click on view all courses at the bottom of your, of, your, of the My Courses widget. And you'll see more options to find your courses. So if you have a list of 20, 30 courses, you can um, use a, uh, a keyword to find the course that you're looking for. So I use the keyword at tech and it shows me that specific course. Um, you can also use roles. So if, for example, if I'm looking for the courses where I'm a learner, it will filter those courses for me and then I can see them here. And you can also sort in uh, in different ways. You can sort by course name, course code, and the date the course was been or the date the course was last access or when you enroll. So if I do last access, then it shows me the, the courses that I recently visited. So that is a great way to find the course you need. So then we have an announcements widget here. These are not announcements for your courses. These are actually institutional announcements. And here we, will, we would find uh, critical or relevant information that the college needs to share with all the members of the community. Then we have the calendar. So you'll see today's date uh, and dots for the dates when activities are occurring. So if I click on October 3rd, for example, it, it will show me here what's happening on October 3rd. If there's something due or an event, and you can do that for every day of the week. Um, and then you have the quick eval widget here. So this is very helpful for uh, professors, for faculty. This gives you a snapshot of the, of the things you need to do in your course. So for example, there are 30 new assignments that I need to review, 80 discussion posts that I need to read. There is a quiz happening soon. You can click on view all activities and that will take you to the quick eval page for all of your courses. You can see them by submission, the names of the students, or you can see them by activity as well. And every course has a quick eval area. So this is quick eval for all of your courses, um, but you can also see quick eval for a specific course. Um, more information, uh, becomes available when you click on the chevron next to the title of each one of these widgets. So for example, you can collapse a widget over here 
uh, you can subscribe to a calendar. You can go to the calendar from here. Uh, so if you go to the calendar, it will open the calendar for all of your courses. And so here, this is the George Brown College calendar. Oh, but I'm, I'm going to go back. From here, you'll see all of your courses. So you can show all calendars and they're color coded. So different colors in this case, in this calendar, uh, refer to items in different courses, or you can filter, you can go to a specific course over here, for example, here we go. And I'm gonna go back to the institutional landing page. Again, you can collapse a widget. Just remember that if you collapse it, um, it will not, there will be no indication that uh, there's information there, so you need to expand it if you want to see anything there in particular. Again, you can also collapse the announcements widget as well, and you can collapse the My Courses widget, but I wouldn't recommend that because this is the one you will be using more frequently. Okay, so that is the institutional landing page for Brightspace. So now let's take a look at a course. I'm going to go to this EdTech at GBC Community of Practice course. And I'll show you, uh, there are more options when you get into a course. So this is called the course landing page. This is the first thing that students will see when they access a, a course in Brightspace. And at the top, uh, they will see, and you will see as well, um, the title of the course here. So that, that is very helpful. If you, if you have courses uh, that have similar names, you can always scroll to the top. So if you scroll to the bottom, you wouldn't necessarily see the title of the course, but if you scroll to the top, you will see it here and you will know you're in the right place. If you're not in the right place, you can use the course selection tool and go to the sandbox, for example. Again, here it is, my sandbox. And also, if I ever need to go back to the landing page for my course, which is this page, let's say I'm in the content area, but I want to go back to the landing page of my course, I just click on the title over here. Okay, if we, if we move to the right, everything else is pretty similar. The big change here is that now by clicking on the name, you have the option to see your course as a learner. So if you view as learner, uh, then you can see what the course would look like for a student. Now your profile picture doesn't show anymore. There is this orange square with two arrows pointing up and down and under my name it says as learner so that lets you know that you're looking at the course as a learner if you want to go back to teacher view to edit view you click on your name and then you will click on the x next to viewing as learner the next thing is the uh, navigation bar the horizontal bar over here and this is where most tools are located um and where you can access the tools in Brightspace. So the first one is the content uh, tool. So this is where students will see the content for your course. And this is where you will build your content. Then we have a communication tab over here. We have announcements, email, discussions, calendar, class list, and FAQ. Um, so all of them are pretty straightforward. The class list is where you will see the names of all your students and the students can also see the names of their peers and, and fellow classmates. And the FAQ is an area where you can create questions that your students ask frequently and provide the answers so that students can always refer to this section if they have concerns, doubts, or they need clarification. Then we have assessments. Under the assessments tab, you'll find assignments, quizzes, and rubrics. So this is one of the places where your students can find their assignments and their quizzes. Rubrics are not visible this way. And so students will see rubrics. They're not visible to students under the assessment tab. Students will see rubrics if you choose to show them the rubrics in an assignment or a discussion, for example. Then we have grades. So this is where you will access your grade book. Class progress is where you can see how your students are doing. Attendance allows you to take attendance in class. And Quick Eval is the tool that will tell you the work that you have pending. 
course tools, there's a few other things here. Checklists, you can create a checklist for your students to help them stay on track and keep a record of the things they need to do. Groups, uh, you can create groups for your students to work in different projects or activities. Then we have intelligent agents. This is a, a tool in Brightspace that allows you to send personalized automated emails to students based on specific criteria. So for example, if your students got an 80% or higher in on their midterm and you, and you want to encourage them and congratulate them, then you can set up an intelligent agent so that they get that email with their names once they achieve that score. Or for example, if they participated in a discussion, you can do the same thing. Or for example, if students haven't logged in in seven days, you can also send them an email reminding them that they should log in frequently so that they can keep track of their learning and, and, and their activities. There's also a tool for surveys and a glossary. The next thing is Zoom. This is where you can create your Zoom meetings for your students and students can access them from here. Then we have course admin tools, an option to manage the files in your course. Course admin will give you a list of all of the tools available to you in Brightspace. So if you cannot remember where to find something specifically, you can go to course admin and you'll see a list of everything that's available to you. We also have import export package. So if you need to copy from one course to another, if you want to export your course or if you want to import materials from different courses, this is where you would do that and manage dates allows you to modify dates for multiple items at once. Then we have resources, which is the same link or tab that we had in the institutional landing page and under more, the media library. I am actually going to go back to the landing page to tell you about the landing page in your course. The first thing you'll see is a banner and um, with an image and then the title of your course. This title can be modified. So the title you find here in, in your My Courses widget, this is the official name of your course. It cannot be modified. However, if I go into my course, I can modify the text that appears here. By clicking on the three dots, you can change the image so that you can upload an image from your computer, but you can also search for one of these beautiful images and, and select them. You can use a keyword for that. So let's say that I'm looking for an image of nature. So you find these lovely images. I love this one of the, of the bee. I'll use the image and it will update my, um, my banner image, but I can also modify the text. So I'm gonna click on customize banner text I can revert back to course name. I can say none, I don't want any text there, or I can say custom. And that is a recommend, I, I would recommend that you don't add a uh, text to the banner image because um, it will make it harder uh, to read in different devices. So if you're using a phone, the banner image will become very small. However, this text will adapt to different devices. So the recommendation is that if you want to add text, you use the banner text area for that. You can also cons uh, personalize it using replace strings. And I'll show you how that works. So you can choose curly bracket and you can say first name space and you close the curly bracket and then you do the same thing for the last name of your student, for example. Okay, and then I will add a exclamation mark and I'll click on save and this is what happens. It says, hello, Rocio Conde. So it will replace that string with my student's name so it can give your student a more personalized um, welcome to the course. You can also say, welcome to, um, to our course and maybe you can add the name of the course and let's say this is about Honey bees. And then there we go. Uh, it, it has the name of the course and then my name. So that is the banner. You can also remove the banner if, if you don't need it. And then we have other widgets here. We have the updates widget. So here students will see 
what's happening in their courses, then the content navigator widget gives students a summary of how the content is organized in the course. Uh, you'll notice that there's a circle with a percentage. This, this tells students what percentage of the content they have reviewed so they can go back to any of the items that they haven't checked. And you'll see that they have reviewed these items because it has a, a, quite a, a check mark. But for example, the course checklist doesn't have a check mark or the assignments folder. There's a few things there that don't have a check mark. So it helps students go back to the content that they haven't reviewed. You can use this breadcrumb to go back to the main folder and you can scroll down and look at all the modules or all the folders available to you. So students will see the Content Navigator widget by clicking on any of these items. They can go directly to that content page. So for example, this is a course outline. They can go back to the content from here so to see a full view of all the content in their course. But if I go back to my landing page, then I can see the course, the Content Navigator widget as well. So this is one of the ways students will access the content. They can have a full view of the content from here, or they can access directly from here. So this actually takes them to a specific item in the course. So that is the Content Navigator widget. Then we have the Announcements widget. So this is where students will see the latest announcement posted. Um, they can click on show all announcements and that will take them to the announcements page. They can see past announcements here. But one important thing about announcements is that after students have read the announcement, they can click on the X. And that actually means that they can dismiss an announcement. So they have already read it, they can dismiss it, it disappears. However, if the instructor makes an update to that announcement, and they can choose an option to, to show it to students again, to make sure that they don't lose any important information. And again, you can, from here as a teacher, you can create a new announcement, you can reorder announcements, you can collapse or expand the widget. The same for the calendar. So the calendar will show what's happening today or will show a full view of the calendar, but also upcoming events here. And then the activity feed is a tool that is very similar to a social media feed for you and your students. So you can create um, a message here, you have create a post, you can actually um, customize it to your students, you can add videos, you can add links, and you can post them. You can also add attachments. And then students can respond to these, uh, to these um, posts um, like a Twitter feed or a social media feed. So I think it's a good place to share interesting resources, having informal conversations, checking in with students. Um, in this area in particular, students can only respond with text, so it's limited for them. However, the, the teacher can be more, share different types of content such as links, videos, images, attachments, so this might not be the best place for students to contribute resources or uh, or videos because they cannot do it here that, that they would be able to do it in a discussion, for example. But I think I still think this is a good tool for for informal check-ins, for checking in, uh, for sharing resources with your students. Uh, um, a teacher uh, uses the activity feed to in a community to share job postings with their students. Okay, so that is the, the, the last widget in the, in the course landing page, but there's also something called the get help widget over here in the bottom right corner. So by clicking on the get help widget, uh, you can uh, find links to important information so how to course copy in Brightspace, how to manage your Brightspace environment, how to do a cross-listing. But if you have a different question, you can do that here. Maybe you have a question about um, assignments. You can click on send. And this chatbot will provide you with resources about assignments. So you can read the article here. 
it gives you instructions on how to create an assignment. You can open this uh, page on a separate tab on your browser so you can read more about an assignments. But if you need to contact support, for example, if you actually need more help, this didn't answer your question, you can contact support. It will ask you for a case description. So how to add, uh, let's say, or maybe how to change availability dates in an assignment. It will ask you for a phone as well. And then you can click on send. And it will tell you whether you want to call, email, or chat with someone from Brightspace. So if you click on call, it will provide a phone number. So I recommend you save this phone number uh, to, uh, to your computer, to your phone, or maybe a notes area uh, on your device so that you can easily access it if you need to, if you need to call Brightspace support. Okay, so that is all. This is the Brightspace environment. Uh, in this course, in this short video, we were able to explore and navigate the institutional landing page and also the course landing page. In, follow, in, in, in the next video, you will learn more about how to create content in Brightspace. And we will also have a video for communication tools and another video for assessments and grades. So thank you for watching and all the best.